All right, kids, on this problem, we want to use a second derivative test to find local extrema. And the second derivative test to find local extrema uh, actually involves finding the uh, first and second derivative. We need to find the first derivative, and we're going to actually solve, set it equal to 0 and solve, okay? So my first derivative is going to be uh, 60x squared minus uh, 15x to the fourth. And go ahead and solve this out for 0. So uh, what we're going to do is factor out like 15x squared. That gives me a 4 minus x squared. And set each one of those pieces equal to 0. Okay. So what I'm going to get from this is 15x squared equals 0 and 4 minus x squared equals 0. All right. So with this guy, I got 0. With this guy, I'm going to have x squared equals 4. Did you catch my math? Um, so x is going to be plus or minus 2. Okay, that's important. Those are the places where we could have mins and maxes. But here's the really cool thing. Second derivative now. So the second derivative is going to be 120x minus 60x cubed. And the second derivative test for local extrema says if we take the values that we found from our first derivative and plug them into this equation, if they are greater than zero, we're going to have a max. If they're less than zero, we're going to have a min. Uh, let me just double, double, double check that. It's backwards. That's backwards. If it's less than zero. So if I look at y double prime of negative two, and it's going to be less than zero, I'm going to have a max. If I look at y double prime of negative two, and it's greater than zero, I'm going to have a min. So all I'm going to do on this is just substitute in these values and find out, hey, what's going on, uh, and see what I can't get. So let me clean this up just a little bit. And we're going to put in these values all right, so if I put a zero in, I get zero. That's not going to help us at all because we need to be greater than or less than zero. So I'm going to look at 120 times negative 2 minus 60 times negative 2 cubed. And then I'm going to look at 120 times 2 minus 60 times 2 cubed. And we're going to find out and, and look at these guys and find out how they sort themselves out. Well, uh, 120 times negative 2 um, is negative 140. And then uh, this would be 60 times 8. So we're going to add 60 times 8, which is 480. And that's going to be greater than 0. So... Um, at negative 2, since it's greater than 0, negative 2 is a minimum value. Since that's going to be greater than 0. Look down here on the other guy. This is going to be 140 minus um, 480. And that's going to be less than 0. So we get a maximum. We get a maximum at x equals positive 2. And if we wanted to know the exact value for the y on that, we could substitute what we got for x into the y's and, and then we would be, or in, we could substitute the value we've got for x into our original equation and get a matching y. All right, so uh, I'll let you do that, but you're gonna look at f of negative 2 and you're gonna look at f of positive 2. And that will give you the y coordinates that give you the um, max and min, the specific points. All right, question number 22, easier than you think. We've been given the derivative and we've been asked to find the, uh, the local extrema. We've already got the derivative. So this question actually is not too bad. We're just gonna set each one of these guys equal to zero. and solve them out. Well, that gives us values of negative 3 and negative 7. So create a number line with negative 7 and 3. Put our two factors over here, x plus 7 and x plus 3. And remember, 
with a sign chart, we're only looking at the sign, the S-I-G-N. We're not really looking at a specific number. Uh, so we're going to pick a number less than 7, like say negative 8, a number between negative 7 and negative 3, like negative 5, and a number larger than negative 3, like 0. You can pick any number from these different groupings, okay? When I put negative 8 in, I'm, I get uh, a minus and a minus. When I put a negative 5 in, I get a plus and a minus. And when I put a 0 in, I get a plus and a plus. So what does that tell me overall? Well, it tells me that my graph is increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. In other words, my graph is increasing to a maximum, decreasing to a minimum, and increasing to a maximum again. So what are my extreme values? I have a max at negative 7. And I have a minimum at x equal negative 3. And I think that's all that we can do on this one because we don't have like a specific point or function of origin to work with here. So all we can say is at what values our max and mins occur, not exactly what y value goes with it. Okay? All right, 23 is super similar to 22. Uh, we've been given a derivative, and we've been told to find the uh, extreme values, the max and mins. So we're just going to set these two guys equal to 0. x plus 4 equals 0, and x plus 10 equals 0. And number line with uh, negative 4 and negative 10. It really helps if you can put these in numeric order. You don't have to, but oh, it just makes things easier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and list my x plus 4 here, and I'm going to list my x plus 10 here. So pick a number less than negative 10. Pick a number between negative 10 and negative 4. Pick a number larger than negative 4. So you can pick whatever number you want. I chose these ones because we're interested only in the sign of the entire problem, the S-I-G-N. So when I put negative 15 into both of these guys, I get negatives. When I put uh, negative 6 in for both of these guys, I get a negative on the top one, but a positive below that. And when I put 0 in for both of those guys, I get pluses on both. And this turns out to be really, really similar to our previous problem because it takes on a situation where Uh, where I've got a max and a min. And, and all we can say is that we're going to have a max when our x value of the original function, we're going to have a max when x equals negative 10. We're going to have a minimum value when x equals negative 4. Now, if we had a little bit more information, we may be able to go ahead and find what that original function was. Since we don't have that information, we can't find that original function, and we can't find a y value that goes with it. But we do know, we do know that the function has a max value at negative 10 and a min at negative 4 from our derivative uh, sign chart. All right, so we want to find a possible graph um, that matches the derivative and the second derivative of a function, and it needs to go through the point P. So some things to keep in mind. Number one, Wherever I cross the x-axis, then I have a max or min value on my function, okay? So wherever I cross the x-axis, I have max or min value. So if I look at A, basically that wipes out all of these guys, except for maybe C. The second thing that we're, we can look at is right here my, my derivative is positive. Right here, my derivative is negative. Right here, it's negative, And right here, it's positive. That means my function is increasing to this point. Then it's decreasing. Then it's increasing again. So check it out. My function increases. It hits the max value. Then it decreases. And it decreases all the way to the next spot. And then it increases again. That matches my derivative. The second thing is that at zero with the second derivative, it's a point of inflection. In other words, we right here, if we're below on the second derivative, we're going to be concave down. 
And if we're above the x-axis on the second derivative, we're going to be concave up. And if you'll look right here, it looks like, now again, we can't say for sure. It looks like it goes through the point P, which we're super interested in happening. It also looks like it's a point of inflection right there. And we can also tell that this is a concave down and this is a concave up. So for this particular problem then, C is the correct graph uh, that matches this derivative and this second derivative. All right, last question is, use this table of properties of a twice differentiable function, select a possible graph of f. And it might be hard to see some of this on your uh, on the screen here, but if you've got your sheet, just uh, just get your sheet out and use it. It's a little bit bigger. That's what I'm going to use because I can read it a little bit a little bit better. Um, so for x values less than two, the derivative is greater than zero, and the second derivative is less than zero. So for y values less than two, I'm going to be uh, the second. If the second derivative is less than zero, that's going to be concave down and increasing. So uh, from two values less than two, I need to be concave down and increasing. So it's got to be a and it's got to be A or D. B and D, A and C. B and D won't work because they are decreasing and concave up. The next thing says that at negative 2, uh, I have a Y value of 9, which it looks like both of these uh, graphs satisfy that or are very close. Um, and it also says that the first derivative is equal to zero and the second derivative is less than zero so that means that again we're concave down and uh, we have a max value so both of these have a max value what appears to be close to nine C actually may be a little bit closer but we'll keep looking here from negative two to zero our derivative our first derivative is less than zero and our second derivative is less than zero so from negative two to zero from negative two to zero we're going to be decreasing, and not only are we decreasing, we're concave down. So that matches this guy, and it matches this guy. Okay, so far so good. At zero, we have a y value of negative seven. At zero, we have a y value of negative seven. Now, both of these also appear to have a y value of negative seven. So, um, we also have a change in concavity. So even though our values are decreasing, we now change from concave down to concave up, okay, because that's what this equals zero part right here means. From zero to two, we have y values that are um, less than zero for the first derivative, but greater than zero for second derivative. So now my graph continues to fall. So my y values decrease, but I'm concave up. The second derivative greater than zero means that I'm going to be concave up, and we can definitely see that. And then the last one, at two, we have a y value of negative 23. So between A and B, it actually looks like, or between A and C, it actually looks like C is going to have that y value. That's definitely a lot easier to see here, where we've got a y value of negative 23. So I'm going to go with a C on, on this guy. Um, but that's how you kind of analyze through this graph and through this chart. And you know what? You could draw this. Try try drawing a graph uh, based on the information given from the chart and see if you can match it. Um, and if you can, you'll have a really good understanding of all the relationships between first and second derivatives and their original function.